Welcome to our review on maintaining water balance. So first thing, we need to understand why it's important to maintain this water balance within our body. Now, if we think about it, throughout any given day, then we will have water that enters and leaves our body. So water will enter our body through food and drink and through the product of respiration that happens in all of our cells. And it will leave the body through sweat, urine and every time you exhale. Another thing we need to be aware of is the definition of this word excretion. So when we're talking about excretion, that is the process by which waste products are removed from the body. So let's consider why it actually matters what the water level in our blood actually is. We need to think back to when we talked about osmosis back in B2 for this. If we've got too much water present in our blood plasma, then the blood cells are going to swell up and then they're going to burst or we say they undergo lysis. Now that's because if we think back to B2 where we looked at osmosis, if you put red blood cells in distilled water, so pure water, then the water moves into those cells until they eventually burst because there's no cell wall to stop them bursting. Now that's not great because obviously we kind of need those blood cells. Obviously the red blood cells transport oxygen. So it's not a great scenario to have your red blood cells just popping left, right and center because we're not really transporting much oxygen then. On the inverse, if we've got too little water present within our blood plasma, then what we find there is that the blood cells are gonna have the water within them drawn out into the plasma itself. So they're gonna shrink and shrivel and generally speaking, shrunk and shriveled things don't really work too well. So again, we find a problem as a result of the water levels not being right with those actual cells surrounding them. When we're thinking about how we can get rid of all of this excess water that we take into our bodies, so particularly for those of you that seem to be constantly attached to a water bottle throughout the entire day, then you're taking in large quantities of water of which only some will your body need to keep within it. So what we end up doing is we make urine. So urine quite simply is a solution that contains all of the excess water, urea and other waste substances. Now urea is a toxic chemical, so it's not great to build it up. So when you see all these ridiculous survival shows where they're all drinking urine, not a great idea because you're just putting a toxic chemical back into your body. So I wouldn't sign up to any latest fad diet that tells you drinking a cup of urine in the morning is great for you because it's really not. Urea is a chemical your body makes naturally and that gets filtered from your blood by the kidneys. And then the urine that is produced using the urea and the excess water trickles down into the bladder, which is incredibly useful because it stores the urine and stops you leaving a little wet trail wherever you go. So just to give you an idea of what kind of bits of the body we're talking about, there's a lovely diagram there that shows you the important parts. So we've got the liver, which is that big triangle shaped bit on the left hand side, which is where the urea is produced. That will then travel through our blood to the kidneys, which you can see there are the kidney shaped items. One on the left, one on the right. Generally, people have two. Obviously, some people have one if they've had issues with a kidney or some oddballs like my grandfather have three kidneys because, you know, you just got a spare. Then what we've got connected to each kidney is a tube that goes down to the bladder called the ureter. We've got the bladder at the bottom there, that yellow balloon type thing. And then we've also got ring of muscle, which controls the opening and closing of the bladder again to stop weird little trickles happening all the time. And you've got the urethra, which is the tube which urine passes to the outside of the body. So don't mix up urethra and ureter, even though they're very similar sounding, they have very different purposes within our body. Now, what we should find is that your urine should actually be quite a pale color in usual terms. So just in case you ever want to stand and look in a toilet and gauge how healthy you are based on the color of your urine, there's a urine color chart for you. So you can see the top three show you're nice and hydrated. So they're the paler colors. Next three down, you're dehydrated. So that's the point that your body is giving you a bit of a warning to go and drink some water. 
and at the very bottom there those last couple that's where you're extremely dehydrated so that's the kind of point that you're in serious trouble and should probably get to a doctor pretty quick now what we find is that the reason we get those different colors in the urine is all down to the amount of water that we're able to put into the urine itself so if your body is short on water your kidneys will keep as much of it inside your body as possible producing only a very small quantity of urine which is very concentrated if you've got a surplus of water so you've been downing several liters of water throughout the day then your kidneys will produce a lot of very dilute urine so what you can see on the bottom left that's a sample from someone who's not in a good place and in the right there you can see the one from someone who's a lot more normal and healthy one little side note is that not all creatures will produce the same color urine as we do as humans certain creatures are designed for obviously these areas of the world where there's not huge quantities of water available so things like hamsters for example are designed to live in quite dry conditions so their bodies are designed to keep as much fluid in their body as possible so they will always produce this very concentrated urine which is why if you've ever had one of these caged rodents as a pet boy do they smell hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe why water levels in the body must remain constant you can describe in simple terms how the body produces urine and you can explain how the body maintains water balance by varying the urine concentration